Overpopulation means almost two-thirds of the people on Earth don't receive enough food to fully develop their minds and bodies. It means three billion people live on less than two dollars a day, and a billion of those live on less than a dollar. It means we are exhausting non-renewables like oil, degrading renewables like soil, and overtaxing absorption capabilities like atmosphere. Overpopulation means less supporting resources. It means our markets channel the shrinking resources toward the rich and away from the poor. Overpopulation means if the cost of food rises relative to the value of labor, the poorest billion people perish. If the cost of energy spiked and the cost of food tripled, two billion people would starve to death. Overpopulation means if starving trips a scarcity conflict civilization death spiral, more billions would perish. Overpopulation means we can understand our predicament if we visualize the Earth's supporting resources as a plate. Each person needs space on this plate to create his or her well-being. Each has to push others away to use that space. The pushing propagates through the community until the person closest to the edge is pushed off and dies. It means in 10 years I expect the pushing to kill an extra billion. In 20 years, the pushing expanded by anarchy, migration confrontations, and resource wars could kill 3 billion more. Demographers tell us that during this same time period, the world's population will increase to 8 billion. Are they in denial about these 4 billion? Demographers aren't the only ones in denial. Most of us believe we don't kill anyone. However, I kill because... How I travel to lunch and what I ate consumes the food that could feed this child. For me, overpopulation means I murder. Scarcity causes two types of murder. The indirect kind where a person living a normal life unintentionally interrupts the food supply of another distant person, and the direct kind, killing your neighbor and taking his food to feed your child. The only way to stop this killing is to decrease scarcity. The only way to adequately decrease scarcity is to decrease population. To stop the killing, we must implement rapid population decline. The Earth's community during the next few decades must have very few births, when population drops enough, when scarcity is reduced enough, the scarcity killings will stop. It's a simple concept. However, it's one that's pretty hard for this couple to appreciate. The benefits of their child far outweigh the hidden liabilities of killing this little guy. For them, this does not equal this. Civilization prevents them from seeing the connection, so the little guy's death didn't influence their reproductive choice. These people are my friends. They work hard to reveal overpopulation problems and to find ways to address them. They know overpopulation means we are all involved in killing. However, they are too kind to tell the couple not to have children. Instead, they promote other solutions like women's rights, women's education, improved access to birth control, redistribution of resources, more efficient use of resources, stopping growth, better leadership, better institutions, improved economic design, even though they know these activities successfully accomplished won't end the killing. Only rapid population decline prevents scarcity-driven killings. The fewer the children, the fewer the killings. While it's common sense to not have children, people cannot figure this out. Experts won't talk about it. People that understand it won't change their behavior. Starvation and conflict with rapid population decline is the second time in my life that I have experienced a schism between knowledge of a good behavior and getting people to take it. I'll tell you about the first time and what we did to overcome it. In 1968, when seatbelts were introduced, they worked so well, wearing them was the intelligent choice. 
However, it was decades before seatbelt wearing became common. Why? People believe good drivers did not have accidents, and they believe that if they were in an accident, they would not be injured. In competition with these fantasies, wearing a seatbelt was worthless. To get people to wear seatbelts, society shamed and then coerced them to wear seatbelts with laws. Today, rapid population decline produces a world without the killings created by scarcity. Very few births implements rapid population decline. Not having kids until scarcity stops promoting death should be everyone's choice. However, like getting an individual to wear seatbelts, not having kids is countered by incorrect beliefs. For example, the future will be wonderful no matter what reproductive decisions I make. I'm not killing anyone, and my kids won't be killed. With these beliefs, there's no motivation to not have children. To reduce overpopulation, global civilization will have to limit how many births happen each year. Civilization must tell individuals who can have a child. Can civilization tell individuals who can have a child? Civilization told individuals they could not have slaves. Civilization told husbands and institutions that they could not subjugate women. Civilization told smokers they could not smoke on airplanes. Civilization told drivers they could not speed in school zones. In all these situations, a benefit justified a law that limited personal behavior. In the case of overpopulation, to stop these killings, civilization can pass laws or civilization can create social pressure that determines who can have a child. There are two processes by which societies can take control of a citizen's behavior. First, creating a new social consensus can get people to accept such directives independent of what culture or government is in place. And, second, through the ballot box, which only works in a democracy. For example, if a majority of the people believe slavery is wrong, they can say, you cannot have slaves. In the case of overpopulation, if a majority can say, overpopulation kills, then society can dictate, or a democracy can have a law that says, have a child by permission only. Our task is to create a majority that believes overpopulation means we're killing one another. Our task is to create people who believe we need rapid population decline to stop the killings. This task conflates to, how do we get this individual to replace his fantasy, this course of action is wonderful, with the reality, this course of action kills children? How do we get them to believe that killings are increasing? That today, while scarcity kills only the poorest of the poor, tomorrow, increased scarcity will kill his child. Before we try to create a majority to address scarcity killings, we should understand what changes we are asking which people to make. Let's distinguish between the challenge of changing a person's beliefs and the challenge of changing a person's behavior. It's easier for a northerner without slaves to change her beliefs on slavery and thus pass a law or create a consensus that no one can have slaves than it is to convince a southern slave owner to change his behavior and free his slaves. Thus, if we're going to use rapid population decline to stop the killings, we have to understand that it is a difficult and exhausting task to convince an endless stream of newlyweds that the act of having children kills. Stopping the killing is more easily accomplished if each couple just follows the new consensus or obeys the new law. So our candidates for belief change are not newlyweds. 
They are the parents and grandparents who don't want to be killers and they don't want their kids killed and their reproductive agenda is behind them. The task is to get them to see the earth has too many people. Bad things are happening. Worse things will happen. And to avoid them, we have to implement rapid population decline. This requires a fixed number of global births. And once they get this new view, it is not their job to preach to their grandchildren. Instead, it is their job to create a social consensus or a civil law that implements that number of children. In summary, overpopulation makes each of us responsible for killing. Stopping the killing requires convincing two to three billion parents and grandparents that they should intervene into everyone's reproductive decisions. Our task today is to create the stories that change the beliefs of grandparents, stories that help them adopt the new belief that because there are too many people for the available resources, we are all unintentionally killing one another. With their range of starting beliefs, there will have to be many different stories. This video series tells these stories.